All right. Have you ever looked up at the night sky and felt like you were just a speck of dust? Like your existence was, you know, insignificant? Forget that now. Because the truth that science is uncovering is way crazier. You're not just human. You're not just dust. You are the universe. You are made of star. And the story of where we came from doesn't start in Africa or in the Stone Age or in history books. It starts at the Big Bang. And I guarantee you, your origin is way more mind-blowing, more ancient, and more magnificently intertwined with the cosmos than anything they ever told you in school. We're about to uncover a secret you carry in your own atoms. Get ready to have your mind expanded and your jaw dropped. Because we're going to trace humanity's origin not just to the first hominins, but to stars exploding billions of years ago. If that idea already hooked you, and you feel like you have a universe inside you, go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to Extinct Doc, because what I'm about to show you today will make you see your own body and the night sky in a way that will never be the same. You won't want to miss the rest of this journey that redefines who you are. You ready? Let's go. To start this epic journey, we have to go to ground zero, to the Big Bang, the absolute beginning of our observable universe, like 13.8 billion years ago. I mean, seriously, a vast, unimaginable amount of time, way before any dinosaur or even Earth itself. In the very beginning, the universe was a super hot, incredibly dense, unimaginably tiny and concentrated soup, which rapidly began to expand. And in that initial flash of existence, in the first 20 minutes of the universe's life, this primordial soup cooked the first ingredients that would one day form you. The most basic elements, the fundamental building blocks that make up 99% of all visible matter in the universe, emerged there. Hydrogen, the simplest element, and helium, the second simplest element. They're like the founding fathers of the universe, the simplest building blocks. But the big question is, if the universe only made hydrogen and helium at its beginning, how the hell do we have carbon, the basis of life, oxygen, which we breathe, nitrogen, and iron, which colors your blood, in our bodies? Like, it wasn't in the Big Bang's original recipe. Where did these gourmet ingredients come from? That's where, my friend, the first generation of stars comes in. These stars, known as Population 3 stars, were gigantic, maybe a hundred times the mass of our Sun. They were the universe's true element factories. Deep within their incandescent cores, under insane pressure and temperatures, millions of degrees Celsius, they took hydrogen and helium and started to fuse them, to do nuclear fusion. They literally created, like in a gigantic cosmic furnace, all these heavier elements that make up every cell in your body and everything around you. Carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and calcium, which is in your bones and teeth, and iron, which colors your blood, in their incandescent cores. They were literally forging the heavier elements that make up every cell in your body. Think of a gigantic atomic power plant, but one that emits light and heat, and whose main product is the essential raw material for life. But there's a catch. For all this to reach you, these stars had to die. And it wasn't just any death. It was the secret of your existence, a cataclysmic event that would change everything. All right, the first stars were essential. They created the fundamental elements for us, but they had a grand and violent destiny. They weren't forever. They had to die. And what a death, my friends. We're talking about supernova, the biggest and most violent explosions in the universe, a cosmic fireworks show no one on Earth can even imagine. When a giant star, with many times the mass of our Sun, runs out of nuclear fuel, mainly iron, it collapses under its own gravity, and then, boom! It explodes with unimaginable force, releasing more energy than the Sun will produce in its entire lifetime in a single instant. 
This supernova explosion isn't just a light show. It's the true cosmic recycler, the biggest recycling program that exists. It doesn't just scatter all those heavy elements the star cooked. Carbon, oxygen, iron, calcium, which is in your bones again. Throughout the galaxy, like a stellar gardener, sowing the universe. But crucially, at the moment of the explosion, under extreme energies and pressures, it creates even heavier and rarer elements, like gold, which might be on your necklace or your wedding ring, and silver. It's nature's grandest spectacle, a cataclysmic event that isn't just beautiful, it guarantees life elsewhere because it scatters the essential raw material to form planets and eventually complex life. Then, these remnants of exploded stars, the stardust full of all kinds of elements, gathers into gigantic clouds of gas and dust like cosmic nurseries called nebula. Gravity, that invisible and powerful force that governs the universe, begins to act, pulling everything closer. Pieces of these clouds begin to spin and contract, forming new suns, and around them, disks of gas and dust. Our own solar system, including the Sun, Earth, and all the other planets, was born from one of these nebula about 4.6 billion years ago. Planets formed by accretion of all this dust and gas, clumping into rocks, and eventually into the worlds we know. We are literally direct descendants of ancient stars. Every carbon atom in your body, every oxygen atom you breathe, every iron atom in your blood was once part of a star that exploded billions of years ago. You are a walking star, like an atomic superhero, but your origin is much humbler. It's pure stardust. It's mind-blowing to think we're made of pieces of stars, right? That we carry a piece of the universe inside us. But which part of you is the most stellar? If you could take a piece of a supernova and keep it as a souvenir, which rare element would you choose? Gold? Silver? Or something even more exotic, like uranium, that would make your watch glow in the dark and give you superpowers? Drop your choice in the comments and let's freak out together. Which part of you is the most stellar? So... We have planet Earth, already assembled, a space rock made of stardust orbiting a second-generation sun. Perfect. But to have life as we know it, to have a player in the game, we need more than just basic elements. We need life's building blocks, amino acids which form proteins, nucleotides which form DNA and RNA. And where did these blocks come from? Science shows us that many of them came from space. The universe, like, made the delivery of ready-made ingredients for life's party here on our planet. Modern science has found amino acids and other complex organic molecules, like nitrogenous bases and sugars, in meteorites and comets that crashed on Earth billions of years ago. Dr. Sandra Pizzarello of Arizona State University is one of the researchers who found these extraterrestrial amino acids, which are the same ones we use here, in meteorites, showing that life has a cosmic touch from the very beginning. It's like having a Lego kit with pieces that came from Mars, but they fit perfectly with the pieces from here. Then, on young Earth, conditions were insane. Active volcanoes spewing lava and toxic gases. Lightning cutting through the dark sky like a laser light show. Boiling oceans and an atmosphere full of gases that would be pure poison for us. But in specific, protected places, life found its crucible, its perfect laboratory where chemistry could start to happen. Think about underwater volcanoes, hydrothermal vents, fissures on the ocean floor that release extreme heat and jets of chemicals rich in sulfur and metals. There, scientists like Dr. Michael Russell of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory suggest that the chemical energy and minerals from these vents created the perfect environment for the first complex chemical reactions. The hot water, minerals and energy acted like a natural battery powering up life in a self-sustaining way, without depending on the sun. It's like a primordial geothermal power plant. Primordial soup and drying pools, 
shallow oceans full of organic compounds brought from space and formed here, where lightning, the sun's ultraviolet energy, and cycles of drying and wetting in shallow pools could concentrate and create more complex molecules and make them clump together into larger structures like the first cell membranes. It was a slow but constant process of life's assembly. It was in this crazy cauldron, this billion-year laboratory, that life's first big idea emerged, to self-replicate, that is, to copy itself, to reproduce. The RNA world hypothesis is one of the strongest and most well-accepted theories. It suggests that the first molecules that could store information, like a primitive hard drive, and copy themselves, weren't DNA, which is what we use today, but rather RNA. RNA could do the job of both genes and proteins. It was the original source code of life, the universe's first biological language. From there, evolution began to take its first steps, from a molecule to a simple cell, from a cell to a multicellular organism, from a strange creature in the ocean to an air-breathing being, and so on. The recipe finally worked. Life was on. Then, my friend, time flew like the solar wind. Life continued its evolutionary journey for millions and millions of years, a story of success and adaptation, of trial and error, from single-celled organisms to multicellular life, from fish to amphibians to reptiles to mammals, and then finally to our ancestors, the primates. And this this is the part of the story that's about our branch on the cosmic tree of life, your beginning here on Earth, your debut on the universe's stage. We didn't come from apes that exist today, no. We and modern apes share a common ancestor. And there in Africa, due to drastic climate changes that created the Great Rift Valley and transformed dense forests into open savannas, life began to get different. Our branch on the cosmic tree of life began to stretch and branch out, taking a unique path, different from all other primates. The big skills we unlocked, the upgrades that made us who we are, were crucial for our ascent. Bipedalism, walking on two legs, Around six to seven million years ago, with Tumai, Sialanthropus chidensis, in Chad, and then the famous Lucy, Australopithecus afarensis, in Ethiopia, we started walking upright on the savanna. This freed our hands for a ton of things, carrying food, babies, and gave us a higher vantage point to spot predators over the grass. It was the first step towards freedom. Tools. We invented everything. With Homo habilis, about 2.5 million years ago, in the famous Olduvai Gorge, we started making stone tools. This opened up a new menu of meat and marrow, supercharging our brains in an absurd way. Mastery of Fire, the cheat code. With Homo erectus, over 1 million years ago, not only used but controlled fire, cooked food, protected ourselves from predators, stayed warm, expanded territory into cold climates. This was a total game-changer, a turning point in the game. Big Brain and Language, the final and continuous upgrade. This supercharged diet, the tools and fire, made our brains grow like crazy, reaching the size they are today. We became smart enough to plan complex hunts, talk, create art, think abstractly and tell epic stories like building reality shows on cave walls. With all these skills in hand, we didn't stay put in Africa. The out of Africa happened, our great migration, the global expansion of our tribe. Homo erectus left Africa nearly two million years ago, colonizing Asia, reaching as far as China and Indonesia, and then Homo sapiens left again, spreading our species across the entire planet, reaching the remotest corners, like colonizing the moon, but here on Earth, facing real challenges. We who started a starbust spread like one, covering the universe with our existence, leaving an indelible mark. It's crazy to think we're stardust, right? And that we left Africa and conquered the world. What do you think humanity's next big step in this cosmic journey? 
Going to Mars and building a space colony like in The Martian? Changing our DNA and becoming cyborgs like biological transformers? Or something we can't even imagine? Something that's yet to be written in our evolutionary source code? Drop your vision for the future in the comments and let's dream together. What's humanity's next level? And if you want to gain more access to these plot twists of evolution, to cosmic stories, and to the most epic sagas of prehistory, you know what to do. Subscribe to Extinct Doc and hit the bell because our story is far from completely told and we don't want you to miss anything. Leave a like if this journey through time and space blew your mind and share this video with that friend of yours who thinks they're just another human on Earth. Show them they're made of stars and that we're part of something much bigger. Thanks for hanging with us. See you next time.